So the difference between Gigaba and Gordon, oh gee, I hate making comparisons, but approach to SARS is evident uh, in the difference in the way that they approach uh, this particular revenue services uh, in the statements each minister made about the revenue services itself. Gordon blamed SARS for the 30 billion rand tax revenue shortfall, but Gigaba said the 1.14 trillion rand tax revenue collection is an achievement. Gordon blames SARS management of being lax in revenue collection. But Gigaba congratulated SARS on the improved uh, tax revenue collection efforts. Uh, Gordon SARS did not meet Treasury projections, but with Gigaba, he says that the South African Revenue Services spared Treasury from borrowing, although borrowing targets had already not been revised. So, what does this all mean? I hate to be controversial, but I like to think that obviously they will both have different views because one was in the office longer than the other. So let's see if uh, we can get some sense into this. Uh, joining me here in studio, uh, we have with me uh, Mr. Mdudu Zulutuli from Lutuli Capital. And also, I'm glad to say that Etienne Retief uh, who is also here with me, who is from uh, Peter Faber. Is it Peter Faber? No, no, it's uh, from Cyper. Cyper, Cyper. Yeah. You must help me with the pronunciation, sir, please, uh, by all means. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the show. We really appreciate your time. L l let's talk about the elephant in the room. There's a new finance minister, and all of a sudden, it seems like all things are honky dory. Was this expected? Let's start with you, Etienne. <laughs> Um, well, I think that the pressure has been on SARS for some time and also the criticism for, the, for what collections they could, could achieve. So uh, we know that SARS has been putting a, a lot of effort, especially towards the end there, to try and make those targets. So we expected them to, to be able to reach those targets, even though it was a bit shorter than originally estimated from previous year's budget. Mm. Do, do the collections of tax are important and pivotal to our economy, uh, particularly when it relates to the fiscus. Uh, do you think that um, these great achievements are, are justified? Can, can we celebrate? Uh, because we know that there's a lot more that can be collected, but in this case it seems like uh, both the finance minister and the commissioner are happy with the efforts that have been done by the revenue services. Look, I think it's a, it's a question of uh, could we have done better? Yes. Uh, but are we happy that we collected over a trillion? I'd rather be in that situation than having, than having collected less than a trillion. We know that the government is hugely dependent on taxes to, to run uh, the economy. That's why the story today of the downgrade is such a big hoo-ha, because one of the biggest implications of that is that now we face uh, a risk of being taken off the World Global Bond Index, which basically what that is, it gives access to foreign investors it gives them access to South African bonds, and they can basically, it's, it's a pipeline for them to provide the South African government uh, with capital. Um, so if that situation seems like it's, uh, it's being threatened or is under pressure, then it puts an even greater emphasis on SARS' ability to collect taxes. I think the biggest, the bigger problem rather that's facing SARS is not necessarily its ability to collect tax, but rather the diminishing or re resistant pool of taxpayers. So those who are there seem to not want to pay tax, and government also has a problem of actually growing that pool because currently it's not big enough. I love the analogy you just used now about talking about a pool, and I'm not talking about swimming because we are actually heading in towards winter. But 18, the importance of collecting revenue um, is critical to the fiscus. One of the things that we know for a fact is that we are not contributing as much, and, and, and Duduz has already alluded to that, that we're not collecting nearly half as much as we should be in actual fact. If you compare the fact that we've got 16 million workers and we only are able to collect from seven and a half million. So uh, uh, how, do we, how do we extend uh, that collection base? How do we grow it? How do we make sure that everybody participates in a declining work or uh, jobs environment and a declining uh, or a slowdown in, in economic growth? 
Well, I think, first of all, we, we need to just understand that the tax base is, uh, when we talk about expanding of the tax base, it's not just the number of people. You can have more people contributing but still collect less money. So on one side, it's more participants. On the other, it's how much I can collect from a participant. There's a large debt pool still for SARS to collect. So yes, they can collect more, um, but uh, as you've alluded to, it's, uh, uh, they're becoming more resistant. So that revenue base that we have is constantly going to be threatened by uh, just general tax morality and people's willingness to, to be compliant, to participate. And I think that's going to be the biggest challenge for science th uh, for this year ahead is going to be um, they can't change the tax base in terms of quantum because that's an economic situation. Yeah. But they, they can address the issue of the collecting efficiently those taxes. They've got the mechanisms to do it, but the pressure is now going to be on going after those more stubborn, more complex kind of structures to, to, to find it. Were you happy to hear about the refunds? You know, refunds is constantly there. Um, <laughs> I, I would say that, you know, there's yeah. two things to take into account. Yeah. Is uh, SARS has taken a lot of criticism for refunds, especially VAT refunds. Yeah. Um, and I still think there are some problems to do with that, mm. uh, definitely, because we see it real time in, in, in industry. Yeah. But at the same time, as SARS has a, a, a burden of making sure that fraud doesn't take place, because every refund they pay out might be a potential fraud. So it's a combination of paying it out as quickly as possible, but while managing fraud. And that is a, is a serious issue where that takes place. With personal income tax, there you find refunds happening a lot quicker, a lot more efficient, because there the fraud is a, perhaps less of a burden than we would have in the VAT sector. Yeah. So obviously seeing fr uh, refunds coming out frequently is, is an important one. Right. The, with the new uh, tax uh, implications uh, that started on April Fool's Day, um, <coughs> can we start talking about, firstly, um, the implications that that might have to the ordinary consumer mm. who is expected obviously to, to comply. Mm. Uh, we know about the fuels levy, for example, uh, the RAF, um, uh, which is the, uh, the, the accident, accident fund, yeah. uh, the road accident fund, that's also been increased, I think, by 50 cents. Mm. Um, but over and above that, um, we're still in negotiations about the, the, the carbon tax and the sugar tax that mm. might be introduced, uh, despite the fact that we've got a new Minister of Finance. Those will definitely uh, uh, be introduced later on in the year. Mm. Uh, where does this leave the consumer? W what options do we have? I mean, it makes it even more difficult for us uh, to, uh, you know, to, to engage e effectively within the economy because we're being taxed so much. Mm. Because it's, it's a really tough situation to be in, you know, and uh, I, I personally wouldn't want to be finance minister right <laughs> now because of things exactly like that. Because we know that the larger part of our population is actually very poor. So for them, uh, any, any sort of increase in taxation is, is already too much. If you look on the other side, your top 1%, if I can call them that, you also don't want to push push the limit there too far because you can only tax the, the wealthy people so far before I'm glad you came that, yeah, to that point because, you, know, because yeah. you remember that the 1.5 bar which is now the, the, the guys who will be taxed up to 45% mm. of, their, of, of their income mm. um, you know we, even though we're saying that those just, that's just about uh, just over 100,000 people mm. uh, the, the point of the matter is those hundred and something thousand people mm. are actually actively contributing so successfully to our tax collection. But not only that, mm. um, can we say that those people are wealthy if you mm. take into consideration the tax base that they fall under mm. and also uh, the prices of goods and services that are available in the market? Well, I think you can say they're wealthy simply because of who you're comparing them to, which is, which mm. is, which is the rest of the market. But yeah. You know, you can look at it and saying this is such a small pool of people, but again, it highlights how important they are to the economy and why you don't want to sort of exclude them. Because the dangerous thing about the wealthy people is they're the ones that actually have the resources to pack up and leave. We, some of us, we have to, we have to uh, find a, a, a solution through this. And again, you know, I keep hopping back to the downgrade, but essentially what that means for the average man in the street is that, you know, 
our imports are going to become a bit more ex a yeah. bit more expensive. Yeah. Basically, we're going to spend more money servicing interest and debt than the, actually the debt itself. Sure. And we just had a bit of good news that petrol prices are, are gone down, which you're going to see probably that's going to be the first sort of impact to the normal man is, is petrol prices going up, which means which really uh, trickles through to everything else, especially food, which means that possibly again we thought we had the top end of the uh, inflation curve. So now does the Reserve Bank say, actually, no, listen, inflation is still going to increase. So we just had uh, a rates decision where they kept it the same and they, they had wanted to start decreasing rates, but I highly doubt that's going to happen. You know what I mean? So going back even to the, to, to the original point is for the average man in the street, uh, you're, is, killing you're killing me. You're killing me, Mr. It seems this, like you're still saying that we're shooting ourselves in the this, foot. Uh, 80 and, um, you know, the, <laughs> in a nutshell, in a nutshell, guys, just in closing, mm. 80 and, the markets will always respond. We know that. Mm. It's a fact. Anything that has to do with politics, anything that has to do with market momentum and movement, that will shift the dynamics and make markets actually respond in a particular way. Mm. Here we are, we are sitting in 2017. This is the month of April, which means we marked the first uh, month of the opening of the second quarter. We had mm. some good results. We had some uh, negative results as well. And today we've been, we've been, we've been downgraded. How, do, how does South Africa respond to that? Well, I think, first of all, these are uh, part and parcel of, of uh, uh, I guess, the economic times that we have. Uh, it's not going to be fixed overnight. It's going to take quite a while to repair, quite a while to, to kind of ride it out. The, uh, there's a number of processes that need to stay resilient, uh, such as the collection of taxes. There's going to be even a greater increase. There's a, about a 10.5% increase on revenue collection estimation for next year. So that's a significant amount more. Uh, Does that not increase our interest rates in no, terms of paying back the debt? Yeah, well, not really, because there's the need for greater, um, in, in terms of the budget, because it's not just that increase, there's also the introduction uh, or the implementation of national health and a mm. number of other processes. So the just in the terms of we don't want to borrow too much, you, you have to significantly increase the revenue collections. So I think the biggest problem is going to be the lack of uh, expectation of economic growth and mm. trying to still meet those. Mm. But I think in the, that's a short-term type of position. In the longer term, uh, you know, if we can moderate our debt and, and kind of ride it through, there is a potential to rebuild. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> that's all the time we have for Biz Pulse this evening. It has been quite an interesting one. As we came through this morning, we had no expectation that S&P will downgrade us. But here's my little two seconds worth of uh, it, uh, um, elaboration on what actually happened. When something changes, it ought to create some sort of impact or a reflection of what it is at where we sit and so therefore the markets must respond to anything whether there's a new finance minister whether there's a new cabinet nonetheless that's what's going to happen but what excites me is the fact that we do have a younger new youthful as it were finance minister and i'm hoping he will be uh, 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 in 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 relations to what is going to be taking place in the country in the following months, he will listen to the country, listen to business, he'll listen to labour, and make decisions that are very very important. And for now, I just want to thank you very much for watching the show this evening. I'm hoping that we're going to catch you on our Whiskey Tuesday edition. But right now, though, I want to show you what time it is for. What time it is now? It's time for. Oh, there it goes. Nonetheless, it's dropped, but it's no it's no purpose because Orlando Pirates lost. Arsenal drew.